Hello everyone, welcome to Shivam's Biology. In this video, we will discuss the process of transportation of gases, that is, the transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide. During this whole mechanism, we will also know the mechanism of chloride shift and reverse chloride shift. After that, we will discuss what is Bohr effect and what is halting effect. So let's continue. Here you can see the whole mechanism of transportation of gases. I will divide the entire mechanism into two separate parts. Let me divide. So here you can see that I have divided the whole mechanism into two different parts. The first part of this mechanism describes the phenomenon that happens near the tissues and the other part describes what is happening near the alveoli. We will firstly see what happens near the tissues. We all already know that in our cells oxygen is used. And this oxygen is used in the process of cellular respiration and in the same process the gas carbon dioxide is produced. This carbon dioxide is needed to be brought back to the lungs and we exhale it out. So here you can see inside the cell CO2 is produced and this CO2 diffuses into the blood capillary here you can see i have drawn a capillary here and inside capillary i have made a large diagram of red blood cell so what we see here that co2 is produced inside the cell and is diffused inside the blood capillaries inside the blood capillaries CO2 is transported in three different forms. Here you can see that some of the CO2 gets directly dissolved in the plasma. It is a very less amount of CO2, about 7% of the total CO2. Another amount of CO2 that is about 23% forms an association with hemoglobin and the compound form here is called carb amino hemoglobin. What happens here? CO2 actually attaches itself with the amine group of the amino acids that is present in the globin part of hemoglobin. So finally what has happened here that CO2 diffused inside the blood capillaries and some part of it get directly dissolved in the plasma. Another part of CO2 forms association with hemoglobin and the compound formed here is carb amino hemoglobin the remaining amount of co2 that is the largest amount of about 70 percent reacts with water in the presence of enzyme carbonic anhydrase which makes this process super fast and the compound formed here is carb uh, carbonic acid H2CO3 this carbonic acid now gets dissociated into two ions that is the bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen ion what we have seen till now let me recap it firstly that inside cell CO2 is produced during the process of respiration this CO2 diffuses into the blood capillaries and is transported in three different forms. Some part of CO2 gets dissolved directly in the plasma. Another part of CO2 attaches with the hemoglobin to form carb amino hemoglobin. And the remaining part of carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid. This carbonic acid dissociates into bicarbonate ion and the hydrogen ion. Now a very interesting thing happens here. 
this bicarbonate ion goes out of the RBC goes out of the RBC with the help of a carrier protein and just to maintain the balance of charge another negative ion that is the chloride ion comes inside the RBC what has happened here this bicarbonate ion goes outside of the RBC and just to maintain the balance of charge chloride ion comes inside the RBC this whole mechanism is called chloride shift now we will get back to what was happening here so this carbonic acid dissociated into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion now another thing happens here inside RBC one other thing was present that was oxyhemoglobin that is the molecule of hemoglobin which was carrying oxygen now this oxyhemoglobin dissociates here and releases oxygen hemoglobin releases oxygen and gets attached with hydrogen here and so it forms uh, hydrogen hemoglobin now what you can see here that due to the dissociation of hydrogen hemoglobin oxygen is released here and this oxygen goes inside the cell and during this whole process cellular respiration keeps on going let me revise it again what has happened here during the process of cellular respiration co2 is produced which gets diffused into the blood capillaries and now it is being transported in three different forms some amount of co2 is directly dissolved in plasma the another amount of co2 that is about 23 percent is now here in the carb amino hemoglobin and the other part of co2 is here near the bicarbonate ion and another thing that happened here is that this oxyhemoglobin dissociated to release oxygen and this oxygen diffused inside the cell to keep the process of respiration continue now we will see what happens near the alveoli we all know that from our lungs carbon dioxide is exhaled and we take in oxygen so similar thing happens here the co2 that was dissolved in plasma the co2 that was dissolved in plasma diffuses out of the pulmonary capillaries and reaches inside the alveolus so this part of co2 reached the alveolus the another part of co2 that was about 23 percent of co2 which was associated with the hemoglobin to form carb amino hemoglobin now gets released here hemoglobin actually dissociates itself from it and this co2 goes inside the alveolus now the bicarbonate ion the bicarbonate ion which went outside the RBC as you earlier seen now comes inside the RBC this bicarbonate ion now comes inside the RBC and to maintain the balance of charges the chloride ion from inside of RBC goes out and this phenomenon is known as reverse chloride shift this is reverse chloride shift now what happens here this bicarbonate ion comes inside of the RBC and the another thing that is happening simultaneously is that the air we inhale gives oxygen here and this oxygen diffuses inside the blood capillary diffuses inside the blood capillary and as soon as oxygen reaches here hemoglobin which was in the form of hydrogen hemoglobin leaves the hydrogen part of it and gets attached with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin 
to form oxyhemoglobin it is a oxygen rich compound and it will now carry oxygen to the tissues of our body and the hydrogen ion released here now combines with bicarbonate ion now both of these ions that are bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions combine to form carbonic acid again to form carbonic acid again now as you know that carbonic anhydrase enzyme can catalyze this reaction in a bidirectional way that is here in the previous part of this diagram you saw that carbonic anhydrase helped to combine carbon dioxide with water and form carbonic acid here the opposite thing happens carbonic anhydrase helps to dissociate this carbonic acid into water and carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide diffuses out into the alveolus and is finally exhaled from our body let me make the process clear again what happens near the tissue near the tissue oxygen is taken in and co2 is released the co2 is transported to lungs in three forms small amount of co2 is dissolved in plasma some other amount of co2 is transported in the form of carb amino hemoglobin and a large fraction of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonate ion and near the alveoli the co2 diffuses out from the blood capillaries into the alveoli all this co2 like the co2 that was dissolved in plasma like the co2 which was part of carb amino hemoglobin the co2 also goes out to the alveolus and the bicarbonate ion which was carrying a large amount of co2 actually now here combines with hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid which dissociates to release co2 and the oxygen we take in here is attached with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin which is transported to the various parts of our body to supply oxygen i hope this whole mechanism is clear to you if you have any doubt in this mechanism please comment down in the comment section of this video and i will make it clear now we will move to the next part let's see what is there and here we will talk about bohr effect what is bohr effect it is actually an increase in co2 in the blood an increase in carbon dioxide in the blood causes oxygen to be displaced from the hemoglobin did you see this earlier yes near the tissues what was happening co2 was diffusing inside co2 was diffusing inside blood here you can see near the tissues co2 co2 is diffusing into the blood capillary so the amount of co2 is increasing here and this increased amount of co2 actually causes this oxyhemoglobin to dissociate and release oxygen so this is known as bohr effect if uh, it doesn't occur then it will be very difficult for the cell to obtain oxygen let's move to this slide again uh, just to make it clear uh, let me move to that part yeah here is bohr effect it states that an increase in carbon dioxide in blood an increase in carbon dioxide in blood causes oxygen to be displaced from the hemoglobin it occurs in blood capillaries near the tissues so bohr effect is very important to supply oxygen to the tissues now we will move to the another part that is the haldane effect what is haldane effect it is actually 
when oxygen binds with the hemoglobin where does it occur it occur near the alveolus when oxygen binds with the hemoglobin carbon dioxide is released you already saw that near the alveolus when we take in oxygen what happens hemoglobin attaches with oxygen to form uh, oxyhemoglobin and due to this co2 is released so this is known as halogen effect and it occurs in blood capillaries near the alveoli i hope the mechanism of transportation of gases is very clear now another thing that i will like to make clear here that uh, before learning the mechanism of transportation of gases you should study the topic exchange of gases if you have not studied the exchange of gases then it will be difficult for you to understand this topic so if you found any difficulty in understanding this topic it might be possible that you have not earlier studied well the topic exchange of gases in which the uh, concepts of partial pressure is given the partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of uh, co2 so you should study that topic before understanding this topic i hope this video is clear to you if you found any difficulty please let me know via the comment section and if you found this video helpful please like the video comment share and subscribe to our channel to receive more such updates